In blockchain, the proof of work and proof of stake debate continues to roll on. Which adds more intrinsic value, is more decentralized, scalable and secure? All extremely important questions, the answers to which are often muddied by tribalism and misinformation, fueled by the desire to protect self-interest over driving real innovation. If we truly want this industry to succeed, it's high time we take a more objective approach. Proof of work and proof of stake are both riddled with trade-offs, but the consensus amongst many Bitcoiners is that proof of work is far superior. Here we will unpack this opinion to understand, are all proof of stake blockchains the same? In what aspects do they excel? And can a blockchain ever produce Bitcoin level security with a proof of stake consensus mechanism? Welcome back to Cardano Insights and part two of this mini series, Cardano for Bitcoiners, proof of work versus proof of stake. In part one, we address criticism surrounding Cardano's three founding entities, trust in blockchain, the ADA pre-mine, Cardano treasury, forking of the protocol, the dangers of blockchain upgradability and its innovative hard fork combinator. If you haven't already, go check it out. This will be linked at the end of the video and I highly recommend giving it a watch for full perspective. Now in part two, our focus will be analyzing intrinsic value and the proof of stake versus proof of work consensus mechanism debate. It's clear there's a major disconnect between large parts of the Bitcoin community and proof of stake systems with the belief that proof of work is far superior from a physical value, decentralization and security perspective. So let's dissect the arguments here and get straight into it. Before we dive in, it's important to very briefly understand Bitcoin's proof of work and Cardano's proof of stake consensus mechanisms. While they both use to validate transactions and secure their respective blockchains, they operate in fundamentally different ways. Proof of work requires miners to solve complex cryptographic puzzles. The first miner to solve the puzzle gets to add a new block to the blockchain and is rewarded with newly minted Bitcoins and transaction fees. For proof of work, physical energy in the form of computing power is used to verify cryptocurrency transactions and add them to the blockchain. This requires significant computing effort from a network of devices. Commonly referred to as mining, this competitive process requires nodes on the network to prove that miners have expended computational power to achieve consensus and to prevent bad actors from overtaking the network. For proof of stake, the amount of computing energy required to verify blocks and transactions is significantly reduced. Instead, this type of consensus mechanism uses the amount of stake or value held in the system to determine consensus. In the case of Cardano, at the heart of the protocol are stake pools, reliable server nodes run by stake pool operators to which ADA holders can delegate their stake in a completely non-custodial environment. This is pure liquid staking. Stake pools are used to ensure that everyone can participate in the protocol regardless of technical experience or availability to keep a node running. Stake pools focus on network maintenance and hold the combined stake of various stakeholders in a single entity. For block production in proof of stake, the creator of a new block is chosen based on a combination of random selection and a determination of their stake to which reward is paid out and divided amongst block producers and staking delegates. So let's take a look at the first proof of work and proof of stake argument. The idea put forward in the case of Bitcoin is that energy being rooted in the real world in the form of electricity is converted into currency and therefore is rooted in physics. This means that Bitcoin is considered to be created from a physical resource due to the tangible energy, computational power and physical infrastructure required for its mining and maintenance. The proof of work consensus mechanism necessitates substantial electricity consumption and hardware usage to solve complex cryptographic puzzles. These physical inputs, being energy and specialized mining equipment, infuses Bitcoin with a form of materiality where physical inputs are transformed into a valuable asset. Bitcoin's intrinsic value is partially derived from the real world resources expended in its production. So this leads us to the first criticism of Cardano and the intrinsic value of its native currency ADA based on its proof of stake consensus. Because ADA is created from what is considered a synthetic resource, the process of staking, the claim is made that it's no better than the traditional financial system and is in effect printing money or ADA out of thin air with no physical resource attached to it. But is electricity and powerful computing hardware the only examples of a physical resource in play when it comes to assessing the value in creation or mining of a cryptocurrency? Sure, if we're to judge Cardano purely on the amount of energy or electricity consumption and specification of the physical computing equipment required to participate in the network of block production, then a narrative can easily be spun claiming it's created largely via a synthetic resource. But the reality is, Cardano is also rooted in physics and in a big way just physics of a different kind. Furthermore, unlike the traditional financial systems, Cardano has a hard cap fixed supply, just like Bitcoin. 
To launch a proof of stake system in cryptocurrency requires an enormous amount of work to establish that initial network effect needed for it to function effectively. If there is no network effect, nobody will buy the currency, participate in staking or build on the system, and the blockchain will become the true meaning of a ghost chain. So when we say Cardano is also rooted in physics, we're referring to the physical work expended in marketing and community building required to generate the initial and ongoing network growth in staking participation. A widely distributed network of stake pools in a proof of stake blockchain is imperative to ensure decentralization, security and fairness. This kind of decentralization prevents any single entity from gaining too much control, enhancing the network's resilience against attacks and manipulation. It also encourages trust among users, as power and decision making are not concentrated. Distributed stake pools enhance security by making it harder for malicious actors to compromise the network. Additionally, they promote inclusivity, allowing more participants to contribute to and benefit from the system. Overall, a well-distributed proof-of-stake network is more robust, trustworthy and equitable. With no physical resource, how would an efficient network of stake pool operators even begin to exist? Well, it's the marketing efforts of Cardano stake pool operators themselves promoting their pools to attract delegation that can be viewed as a physical resource similar to Bitcoin's proof of work model in that they both require tangible investments that contribute to the network's intrinsic value. In Bitcoin, the intrinsic value is derived from the substantial expenditure on electricity and computational hardware, reflecting a real-world cost and effort. Similarly, Cardano's SPOs must invest in marketing strategies, which requires time, money and human capital to educate, build reputation and attract delegators. This marketing activity is essential for maintaining a decentralized and secure network, thereby contributing to Cardano's intrinsic value. Just as Bitcoin's value is underpinned by the real-world resources expended in mining, Cardano's value is supported by the tangible efforts of SPOs in marketing, education and awareness spreading to ensure a robust and distributed network participation. Attracting and maintaining delegation is extremely difficult in a proof-of-stake system. You cannot simply open a pool for delegates to just flock in overnight. In fact, it's highly unlikely to attract any delegation at all if no effort is expended. This process often requires SPOs to create mission-oriented stake pools, whereby they offer more than just a pool to stake to, but leverage the success of the pool to give back to the community in the form of blockchain education, community building, charitable and environmental causes, along with a whole host of additional incentives that sell the benefits of why you should stake in the first place. Furthermore, when compared to Bitcoin's mining pools, which are largely anonymous, Proof of Stake promotes a stronger, more engaged community through the stake pool operator network. As we have outlined, the successful operation of stake pools requires active communication, transparency, and community trust. This engagement builds a robust participatory ecosystem where community members are more invested in the network's success. Validators or stake pool operators are rewarded for securing the network, and this reward cascades down through to the pool delegates. This creates a demand for ADA tokens, and this demand encourages participants to acquire and hold more ADA, effectively turning the digital asset into a valuable resource that can be staked to earn more ADA. Without a well-distributed network of stake pools and meaningful participation level of delegation, a proof-of-stake network would cease to exist. The distributed nature of proof of stake requires a network of nodes across the globe, each representing a physical point of presence. These nodes, while digital in function, constitute a global network of physical devices contributing to the overall infrastructure. Whilst this is incomparable to the specialized mining equipment, computational power and energy consumption required for Bitcoin's proof of work, for Cardano and the adoption of blockchain technology, this is a feature, not a flaw. Energy efficiency means highly scalable and lower computational requirements presents far more opportunity for inclusivity and flexibility in the deployment and decentralization of the network. The argument that Cardano's proof of stake network is entirely a synthetic resource is incorrect, but just differs from the proof of work model. This proof of stake system requires physical infrastructure, energy consumption and physical human activity to generate meaningful participation in delegation. With over 3,000 stake pools and approximately 22 billion ADA of the available 36 billion supply actively staked, Cardano is the largest true liquid non-custodial staking protocol in existence. You don't achieve this level of participation and active stake delegation without expending a tremendous amount of energy. Sadly, DeFi Llama doesn't show you this and omits Cardano from the reporting only tracking custodial staking protocols. 
Other proof-of-stake blockchains like Ethereum impose slashing, have a high barrier to entry to even participate in staking and offer largely centralized custodial staking solutions. Don't confuse this type of proof-of-stake, Cardano is built differently. It has no slashing, delegates remain in full control staking in a completely non-custodial decentralized environment, their stake remains liquid, meaning it can be moved and spent freely with no lockups, and it's by far the most inclusive proof-of-stake system with around just three ADA required to participate. So when it comes to being rooted in physics, I guess it's one where you have to question which you place most value on. The physical energy expended through electricity and specialized computer equipment, or the physical energy expended through human activity and marketing the network that drives decentralization and community building. I'd argue when it comes to proof of work and proof of stake consensus, it's Cardano's proof of stake design choice that has fostered the largest, most engaged and knowledgeable community in the entire space. These characteristics will no doubt play a major role in the continued success and adoption of this blockchain. Now it's also suggested that it's peasants versus kings when it comes to Bitcoin's mining pools and Cardano's stake pools. This refers to the idea that anyone can establish successful Bitcoin mining, but for Cardano and its proof of stake system, only the wealthy can succeed in establishing profitable stake pools. However, the reality is setting up a Bitcoin mining operation requires significant capital investment in specialized ASIC miners hardware, access to cheap, often subsidized electricity, and the ability to manage a large scale operation. These high barriers to entry actually concentrate mining power in the hands of very few wealthy entities. Despite the intention for decentralization, proof of work can and has led to increased centralization where large mining pools or entities now control significant portions of the network's hash rate. In contrast, setting up a Cardano stake pool is far more accessible. It requires a modest initial investment in standard computer hardware and technical know-how, making it feasible for a wider range of participants to enter the ecosystem. Furthermore, the AO parameter in Cardano's protocol is designed to prevent the centralization of rewards. It balances the benefits between pool operators and delegators, ensuring that simply having a large pledge does not guarantee disproportionate rewards. This incentivizes decentralization by making it attractive for small and medium sized pools to compete. Success in running a Cardano state pool is not solely dependent on wealth or initial pledge. Pool operators must also effectively market their pools and engage with the community to attract delegators. This dynamic fosters a more equitable playing field where enthusiasm, transparency and community trust can outweigh sheer financial power. This produces a far more egalitarian system. Whilst Cardano is officially proof of stake, unofficially it can be considered to have a hybrid consensus in almost a version 1 proof of merit system. Those who demonstrate value and contribute positively to the system and community can succeed and are rewarded for doing so. Therefore, unlike Bitcoin mining, which tends to favour the wealthy due to its high entry barriers, Cardano's staking mechanism and the AO parameter foster a more decentralised and fair environment, allowing motivated individuals with modest resources to participate and succeed in the network. So what about the narrative that Cardano's proof of stake is more susceptible to government interference in the sense that through brute force, a proof of stake system could be taken over by printing fiat out of proportion and buying up over 51% of the supply, or could somehow take out the network of Cardano SPOs by restricting their operations. These are all hypotheticals, but still potentially real world vulnerabilities that powerful entities or governments could attempt to exploit. However, these potential vulnerabilities are not exclusive to Cardano and proof of stake, and this is an unfair narrative. Bitcoin's proof of work consensus is just as susceptible to government interference. Equally, governments could print money to buy large amounts of Bitcoin, gaining significant influence over the network. They could also invest heavily in their own mining operations, acquiring the computational infrastructure required to monopolize mining. A government could nationalize major mining facilities or subsidize new ones, controlling a majority of the network's hash rate and thereby influencing block validation and transactions. Similarly, in Cardano's proof of stake system, a government could accumulate large stakes, centralizing control. Both scenarios demonstrate the vulnerability of decentralized networks to well-funded coordinated efforts by state actors. But when compared to Cardano's well-distributed network of SPOs, Bitcoin's proof-of-work consensus has become increasingly centralized due to the high cost and specialization required for mining. 
The intense computational power needed for proof of work has led to the dominance of large mining pools and companies with significant financial resources to invest in specialised hardware and cheap electricity. This concentration of mining power undermines Bitcoin's original vision of decentralization, as a small number of entities control the majority of the network's hashing power, increasing the risk of coordinated attacks or even government buyouts and effectively reduces the overall security and trustworthiness of the blockchain. This brings us back to this idea of Bitcoin's physical resource and energy rooted in the real world being superior. Centralization of large Bitcoin mining rigs actually poses a significant threat because these operations are heavily dependent on physical infrastructure, including specialized hardware and access to cheap electricity. This makes them immobile and vulnerable to government interference such as regulatory crackdowns or sanctions. If a government were to restrict or ban mining activities, relocating such large-scale operations would be extremely costly and logistically challenging, potentially disrupting the network's security and stability. In contrast, Cardano's proof of stake network offers greater resilience and flexibility here. Setting up a Cardano stake pool requires minimal investment in standard computing hardware and can be managed remotely. This low barrier to entry means that stake pools can be easily and cost effectively established or relocated anywhere in the world. In the event of government interference, operators can quickly move their stake pool operations to more favourable jurisdictions or even do so remotely, ensuring continuous network functionality and decentralisation. This adaptability makes Cardano's network more robust against geopolitical risks and regulatory pressures, promoting a more resilient and decentralised blockchain ecosystem. But ultimately, as we know, blockchains are social systems. In the worst case scenario, do you think a well-engaged community that values decentralization and the idea of a fair inclusive system would tolerate this kind of disruptive influence? As we discussed in part one, the community would likely fork the blockchain, almost a fail-safe or preventative measure in play that could make the potential for these kind of attacks on blockchain systems more complicated to execute in practice. Now, blockchain design architectures, they're all about trade-offs. It's well documented that proof of work provides higher security guarantees out of the box than proof of stake. The traditional proof of stake model is criticized for its susceptibility to long range attacks, the nothing at stake problem, eclipse attacks, and a range of other attack vectors. Overall, these vulnerabilities highlight the need for a robust security mechanism and careful protocol design in proof of stake networks to mitigate these factors that are not present in proof of work. But the real questions from a Bitcoin perspective are, can proof of stake systems realize the same level of security guarantees to Bitcoin's proof of work? And if so, would this not make it the most superior option in a blockchain evolutionary sense? The key component here is not all proof of stake systems are the same. In fact, Cardano is a complete outlier and trailblazer in this respect. To classify all proof of stake blockchains the same and inferior to proof of work is disingenuous or misguided at best. See, from a Cardano engineering perspective, it was well aware of the security vulnerabilities a proof of stake system poses from the offset. This is why it has dedicated so much time, research and resources into solving the security issues common with proof of stake protocols through the academic process, the first of its kind. Cardano chose proof of stake not to be different or through engineering error, but because of the immense benefits this protocol design enables. This design choice was deliberate in order to realize a highly scalable system that's massively energy efficient, becomes more decentralized over time, far more accessible or inclusive to all users, and one that fosters a stronger, more engaged community as a result. All benefits to which Bitcoin's proof of work model struggles to compete with. Long term, proof of stake has vital ingredients needed to drive mass adoption in the most decentralized fashion. By combining unique technology and mathematically verified mechanisms, including behavioral psychology and economic philosophy principles, Ouroboros guarantees and supports the security and sustainability of any blockchain implementing it. The result is a protocol with proven security guarantees able to facilitate the propagation of global permissionless networks with minimal energy requirements. Cardano is the first of such networks. In terms of security, what Cardano has proven with proof of stake and specifically Ouroboros is that it boils down to how far you're willing to be on the academic side while sacrificing the quick to market side like many other proof of stake blockchains. In the case of Cardano, it's actually done something industry defining in as much as it set out to solve the issues with proof of stake security to realize the tremendous benefits gained from a proof of stake system. Although I'd argue it's primary, Cardano is considered the most serious of all the so-called altcoins for a reason because it was willing to put in the time and effort to produce the first formally verified provably secure proof of stake consensus protocol and the first based on peer reviewed research. Why did they take this extremely costly time and resource consuming approach? 
Well, because that is the academic process and what it takes if you want to achieve something like Bitcoin level security in a proof of stake system. As a result, Cardano's Ouroboros has been built and rolled out in an iterative style. With each upgrade or version, specific attack vectors are removed. First with Ouroboros Classic, then Praos, the introduction of peer-to-peer, -peer, and now with the up-and-coming Chang hard fork, the implementation of Ouroboros Genesis, where the science dictates that Cardano will finally produce Bitcoin-level security guarantees in a proof-of-stake protocol. The Genesis paper is from 2019 and only now is coming to fruition as a real-world technology. This is the type of research and engineering effort undertaken to why we say that Cardano is built differently. I think the perfect way to end this episode in the series is to highlight something that will hopefully demonstrate that this isn't some kind of proof of stake versus proof of work, my consensus mechanism is better than yours type video. For the continued evolution and success of the entire space, an open mind to blockchain technology, research and development is vital. Here we can evidence that the Cardano blockchain research effort actually considers and embraces the strengths of both proof of work and proof of stake architectures, recognizing the value each brings to the table. This balanced perspective is exemplified by Cardano's research into multi-resource blockchain consensus as detailed in the Minotaur multi-resource blockchain consensus paper from IOHK. This innovative research explores a hybrid consensus model that combines elements of proof of work and proof of stake, aiming to leverage the security and robustness of proof of work with the energy of efficiency and decentralization incentives of proof of stake. Rather than engaging in tribalism over architectural designs, Cardano's focus is on engineering the most superior blockchain system and open source research or technologies to push the entire space forward. This flexibility enables a more resilient and adaptable network capable of evolving with the technological landscape and arms its engineers with vast industry expertise. Ophelimus is another example of this. This is research into a novel consensus protocol introduced by OHK that combines the principles of proof of work and proof of useful work. Unlike traditional proof of work, which focuses solely on computational difficulty, Ophelimus aims to utilize computational resources for solving useful real world problems while maintaining blockchain security. This approach enables the harnessing of network participants' computational power for beneficial tasks such as scientific research, AI training, and other data intelligence intensive operations, making blockchain mining more productive and environmentally sustainable. The Minotaur and Ophelimus projects underscores Cardano's commitment to pushing the boundaries of blockchain technology and demonstrates that their approach to blockchain development is far removed from the maximalist mindset. It can't be denied that this forward-thinking strategy to research and development positions Cardano as a leader in the blockchain space, continually exploring and integrating cutting-edge research to build more efficient, secure and inclusive blockchain systems. Hardened Bitcoin maximalists don't want to admit it, but the space is rapidly evolving and there is a very real danger of being left behind if Bitcoin as a blockchain fails to adapt and evolve with the technological advancements and innovations this industry continues to produce. Just as the industry took inspiration and evolved from Bitcoin, it's time that Bitcoin starts embracing the industry and considers the valuable research available that could add tremendous value to its own evolution. So that's it for part two in this series, Cardano for Bitcoin as proof of work versus proof of stake. A big thanks to everyone tuning in, I really do appreciate it. If you want to delve deeper into this subject matter, I've dropped some very helpful links in the description detailing some of the sources for the information presented in this video. If you found value in this perspective or discovered something new today, please consider subscribing and hit that notification bell so you don't miss future installments. Part three is coming soon. Until next time, have a great weekend ahead and as always, keep it caught on it.